Ayan na, ayan na, kamusta kay Jan, mga kameta, how are you? Hello from Manila, Manila the city of traffics Talagang mga kameta, ito talaga Medyo windang pa tayo sa, sa traffic dito sa Manila Since uh, bumalik tayo mga kameta, nako 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 Mukhang nabutan natin yung strike, of course Uh, you know, our solidarity and our uh, sympathy no, sa lahat ng mga apektado dito. On one hand, of course, uh, uh, we hope na we find the resolution dito para hindi naman kawawa yung mga ating mga, uh, alam, alam mo naman, mga pasta driver, sweet lover, diba? yung ating mga transportation sector na mga kapatid. I understand that the situation is quite difficult. Of course, napakamahal ang mga basic na bilihin. Internet pa lang. Yung internet pa lang, hirap na hirap na yung iba, di ba? Napakamahal dito sa Pilipinas. Napakahirap dito sa Pilipinas pagdating sa cost of living. So, if you look at the Manila, is second or third in buong ASEAN in terms of cost of living. But in terms of uh, average income, isa sa pinakamababa sa Southeast Asian region. So, something is uh, seriously wrong. So, kailangan natin ayusin yan, mga kameta. Alright? Okay. Um, now, marami tayong pag-usapan For today, uh, before going there, I'm just setting up this aside. Before we go into our discussion today, I'll keep it quick because we need to to mass. Na naman, dahil traffic na naman abutan natin mga kameta. Eto, 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 eto. Of course, uh, first of all, katulad ng sinabi natin, we're looking at uh, setting up an interview with uh, Senator uh, Laila De Lima later this week. I'm also looking at uh, setting up an interview with uh, former Congressman and uh, Doctor Professor Walden Bellio. Of course, magkakaibigan yung dalawa nyan and. Uh, Yeah, let's see. I mean, uh, you know, of course, those two are very good friends. Those two have been uh, in touch throughout the years through thick and thin uh, and uh, uh, mutual admirers. And of course, uh, as we see mga positive developments dito sa kaso ni Senator De Lima, of course, there's a hope that other similar cases or cases that are believed to be politically motivated and, uh, you know, uh, yung mga hangovers, yung mga, uh, yung mga, um, yung mga you know, questionable court cases in the view of some na, na essentially na carry over from the previous administration na many are hoping na medyo magkakaroon ng resolution at maayos din yan. Uh, President Marcos Jr. is also of course back from the United States, mga kameta. Uh, he had a very, very productive meeting at least in terms of traveling <laughs> sa San Francisco, sa Hawaii. Na-meet niya yung mga kababayan natin, yung mga kapsat natin na Ilocano, nagadumat kay Hawaii, no? Talagang pagdapan kay Jay Hawaii. Pag sinabi mong Ilocano ka, wala na, filatom ka na, di ba? Uh, and uh, of course, mga kamets, mga kamets, um, uh, there were some big, big, big meetings between President Marco Jr. and top defense officials in the Pentagon. There have been also discussions about American investments in the Philippines. But yun nga, sabi natin, sana hindi maging pledge dipro- diplomacy lang, hindi lang magiging pledge diplomacy. So having said all of that, all of that let's go one by one. Okay. Una-una, of course, nagtitrending kanina ito si... Former spokesman uh, of uh, Rodrigo Duterte, someone who's supposed to be a human rights lawyer, na hindi nakapasok dun sa international, ano, uh, something for international humanitarian law people. Uh, alam niya ba Of course. I mean, once you're a spokesman of Duterte, and trying to at least in the view of critics, apologizing uh, dun sa mga <laughs> um, na, dun sa mga alam niya na. Ang mga kababalagan sa ilalim na nakaraan na administration, you know, it, it, it's hard to, you know, uh, it's hard to convince the world na ikaw ay isang bastion of human rights, etc. But having said that, that hasn't stopped uh, this former presidential spokesman from kind of injecting himself in the conversation and, and, and saying, base dito sa Philippine Star Report, na uh, yung, uh, yung judge na who oversaw yung grant, Uh, yung nag, uh, nag-grant ng bail uh, kay former President Senator De Lima ay uh, kanyang dating paboritong estudyante at San Beda College. Ah, nagturo ba sa San Beda to? Di ba taga-UP yan? Nagturo sa UP yan. Anyway, so uh, of course, naturally, maraming nagtaas ng kilay to put it mildly like, wait lang. First of all, uh, okay, like so what are you implying here? And, and pangalawa, of course, many people remember that one of the persons Right? Or one of the group of people na sobrang daming sinabi kay Senator De Lima back in the day, alam niyo na who, di ba? So, connect the dots, no? And of, of course, as you know, Senator De Lima has also implied that she will go after her tormentors, beginning with former President Rodrigo Duterte, potentially also former Justice Secretary Aguirre. But, 
we know that hindi lang itong dalawa ay behind yung mga very, you know, very, some would say, very politically motivated, critics would say, very, very vicious, barbaric, vulgar attacks against the former Senator Leila Delima, who's now enjoying a semblance of freedom, enjoying some time with her family and loved ones, and now looking at taking the fight back to her tormentors and uh, making the most out of the uh, complete transformation dito sa political dynamics sa Pilipinas. So let's look, let's look at mga kameta, what's, what's, what's gonna happen there. Uh, what are going to be the developments there? Kausapin natin si Senator Leila Delima later this week. Uh, God willing, tignan natin ano yung mga plano niya or anong pwede niya i-share na plan. Of, of course, pagdating sa batas, kailangan madiskarte, kailangan uh, ready-ready yung kanyang team. Hindi pwede talon-talon lang. No? So, let's see what's happening here. Now, now this, this brings me, of course, to the other issue. Uh, you know, this concern that, you know, cyber libel, libel-related laws or... Uh, laws that were passed during pandemic, among others, ay nawa weaponize. And one thing weird that ha it's happened right now is, meron tayong itong report by Michael Navalo, si Attorney Navalo, uh, from mga uh, kaibigan natin sa ABS-CBN. So may pinos siya kanina, uh, mga kameta, na isang private school teacher na nagpost ng video of a police officer and identifying the vice president as the VIP who will pass by Commonwealth. Oh, mali naman ka who passed by the Commonwealth Avenue is now facing complaints for sharing false news and child abuse before the QC prosecutor's office. So medyo, medyo malangkot yan mga kameta. Um, uh, so of course people are saying, what? Bakit napunta sa ganitong usapan? Di ba? So what, what, what's happening here? Alright, i-post natin mga kameta dito yung video para makita niyo naman yung, yung pinag-usapan natin. Wait lang daw. <laughs> Ang dami natin. Kailangan tignan dito. Wait lang ha. Um, let's check this out, mga kameta. One second lang. Okay, I, I hope it's this one, no? Ay, hindi pala. One second. Tinga naman tayo eh. Mga kamets. Mga kamets. Yan, okay. Ganun pala yung style. Ito, mga kameta. Oh. So, ito yung pinos ni bossing, uh, Si Attorney Navalo uh, of ABS-CBN. Mausay po na journalist yan at uh, of course abogado rin. So, ito, ito, ito. So, ito po yung video na nakita natin yun na itong, ito po yung private school teacher na nag-share uh, ng video about dun sa police officer identifying dito sa Sarah dito. Ito sa DIP with Pastor Comrade na of course marami nag-complain. Uh, uh, Later on, ang nangyayari ko lang dito is inaktusan pa siya ng spreading fake news and child abuse, etc. So, Janus Monar says he's baffled. I-posting natin itong mga kamayto para makita niya yung defense ng itong active citizen na nag-share out of just genuine concern. Hindi naman hater siguro yan. Si Kuya naman. Just sharing, di ba? Na yung VIP culture sa Pilipinas medyo... Uh, siguro kailangan review. Now, of course, uh, hindi pa natin na-confirm sino ba talaga nandun. Uh, all he did was just to share, uh, you know, a video that implied that, you know, certain uh, influential person was somehow, ano, perhaps the reason why sinara yung Commonwealth. I, yung kampo naman ni Senator Vice President Sauditer, of course, uh, clearly denied this. Uh, but uh, the concern that nice back Pinost ko yung video uh, Yung Nung Sinair ko po yung video na oh, Kaya nagulat Kaya nagulat si Sir Kaya nagulat po kami Kaya nagulat Kaya nagulat po kami Kaya nagulat po kami Kasi akala namin Yung station commander Yung uh, file Pero Kasi Police pantulian yung nag file Sabi ko paakit mm -hmm. Eh siya mismo yung nagsabi na Oo oh, oh, dadaan si Rick And then siya pa yung Nagreklamo At nagulat din po ako with the filing of child abuse, no? Parang, ang dali-daling manira ng pangalan kasi I built up my reputation for 18 years already as a teacher. May wala akong inabusong bata. Pero ngayon, sinasampahan ako ng child abuse. Kaya nagulat ako. Siguro, I feel, uh, kung totoo man yun, I feel the reaction ng bata. Pero, parang anlayo kasi hindi ko siniraan. Wala akong ginawang paninira doon sa police nung mm -hmm. pinost ko yung... So, ito, of course, uh, maintain ng uh, si, si Sir, no? si Teacher uh, Monar na uh, walang basihan itong um, accusation ng child abuse, etc. And, you know, and, and, you know, he's wondering if this has had to do something about yung 
uh, pag-post ng video na yan or this was a way of trying to silence him or intimidate him, etc. So, ito po, of course, uh, big issue yan. Dito nga yung dadahan. So, I put it in the comment or in the uh, comment. Kasi, gaya po ng sabi ni attorney, um, it's our expression of fun eh. Um, yung freedom of speech ba? So parang ako kasi gusto ko lang ma mapalabas sa social media na parang too much din naman yung patigilin mo yung buong common para ikaw ay dadaan. No? And with the pronouncement of uh, police at kulyano naman na si Vipi nga yung dadaan. So I put it in the comment or in the uh, caption na dadaan daw. Which I refer to what uh, Pantoliano said, na dadaan na. So ako, dadaan daw si Dati Sara. So big, bigyan ng daan yan, sabi ko. Pero I, I also put there the confidential queen. Siguro doon sila na inis. Kasi, well, I, I am only following kasi yung issue noon ng confidential issue with regards to the vice president. Kasi nga yung paggasta, no, parang excessive din naman yung 11 days na gastos mo lahat yung... Uh, yung budget na yun. And I really want my students also to see na ito parang abuse of power na yung ginagawa. Kaya ako with with all those contemporary issues po, nagbibigay talaga ako ng comment. Oh, sir, so you think ang nag-file talaga nito ay yung police officer or somebody else is behind this? Um, hindi ko po alam. Ano po kung uh, somebody is behind this? Kaya nagulat po kami. Wait lang. Si Attorney Jokno pala yung abogado niya. No? Wait lang. Sino ulit ang abogado niya? Yung pala si Attorney Jokno, of course. So, you know, you, uh, alam niyo naman si uh, Senator Candidate, former Senator Candidate, at, and, and, and of course, Dean yeah, yeah, yeah. Attorney Jokno, isa sa mga leading human rights lawyers ng bansa. At nakikita no, naman na talaga yung mga tulong siya dito. No? Sa mga, Kasi, alam natin, nung pandemic time pa lang, actually way before that, pero pandemic time pa lang, uh, you know, uh, Attorney Jokno, uh, who we also interviewed dito sa podcast natin during election period, uh, really took up the cudgels, no? Doon sa mga citizens na shot down at we weaponize ang libel, cyber libel laws sa mga others para ma-intimidate sila at uh, mga kameta, no? So, ito po, uh, just, just, just be... So, ito po, uh, kasama niya si attorney Chel Jok, no? Ito yung magagaling ng mga attorney. Ito mga attorney talaga na alam niyo naman, they're, they're fighting for, for human rights, they're fighting for the concerns of people. And speaking of which, uh, ito, ito. Pag Tignan naman natin yung sinabi ni Attorney Jok, no? Dean Jok, no? Uh, kasi ano eh, ma guys, mahalaga yung mga ganitong cases. Kung ikaw yung simple ang mga mayan, tapos may, may nakuha kang video na sinishare mo lang yung potential abuse of power or alleged, tapos biglang maganyan ka, eh, anong gusto natin mangyari dito? Diba? Kung... Siguro, ang tinutukoy nila, malamang, although we don't really know, ay yung spreading of false news pero wala namang false doon sa sa na-share na video mm. dahil yun ay talagang hindi pati si Pantoliano sinabi naman niya na yun din ang talagang si binanggit niya nang in-interview siya ng hindi nakilala na videographer RA Article 154 na nagtataka rin kami kasi apat ang offense na napapanood diyan sa article na yan mm. kasama doon yung spreading of false news publishing of uh, printed material without uh, attribution kung sino yung author, may mga ganon. Pero doon sa complaint, hindi naman nakalagay kung alin doon ang kinomit na offense ng uh, client ko. Siguro, ang tinutukoy nila, malamang, although we don't really know, ay yung spreading of false news. Pero wala naman false doon sa, sa na-share na video. Dahil yun ay... Talagang, hindi, pati si Pantoliano, sinabi naman niya na yun din ang talagang si, binanggit niya nang in-interview siya ng hindi na kilala na videographer. RA Article 154. So yun po, so nangyita natin yung uh, explanation from Attorney Jok, no, no at uh, ang concern niya dito is how on earth the Article 154 of the Revised Penal Code ay applicable to this case. And because yung video na was essentially quoting, right, a policeman on the record saying that a certain high-level official, blah, blah, blah. So, pa bakit siya yung sinisisi? Eh, he's just transmitting the information that is being publicly uh, shared by isang, uh, essentially, you know, a, a public official, diba? So, at, at, at the, of course, the other more concerning dito mga kameta is hindi lang dito sa 
uh, potential libel aspect dito, yung cyber libel aspect dito. But uh, there's also this aspect, no, na inakusa na uh, ng other criminal charges, na very very serious and you know very uh, unfair para sa etong nakusa natin. Hindi <laughs> namin ma gets kung bakit uh, may charges na ganon. Ano explanation niya? Bakit may child? In what sense may child abuse? Well, ang nakalagay sa complaint, sabi ni complainant Pantoliano na nakita daw ng anak niya na minor yung video at na-trauma daw siya. Mm. Pero sa tingin namin, ay talaga naman unfounded yung charge na yun. Dahil uh, ang ginawa lang naman ng kliyente ko ay tulad ng ginagawa ng mga milyon na Pilipino na sinare niya ng yung video ng isang uh, public official performing public function sa isang public place. Mm -hmm. Dahil ang nasa video naman si uh, Sergeant Pantoliano na nagka-traffic at uh, sa Commonwealth Avenue. Kaya sa tingin namin, wala naman, wala naman uh, masama at walang illegal doon sa ginawa niya. Mm -hmm. Hindi namin ma Yes, yeah, so kung... medyo parang na weird na natitwiin, parang what? Parang yung child abuse yung, yung case na yan. But, but this is what's very important mga kameta. This is the most important part dito. Because dito makikita na talaga what is the broader political impact ng ganitong situation and how this is potentially very unhealthy if not destructive para sa ating demokrasya. No? So tingnan natin explanation ni Attorney Jock na dito. Diba? And he has been consistent about this throughout the years. Please check this again. So ito ha. Ito yung concern niya. <laughs> Well, following the logic ng uh, pag-file ng complaint laban kay Janus, ang ibig sabihin nun ay kahit sino ay pwede rin kasuhan kung sila ay nag-share. Mm -hmm. At doon din kami napapakala. Dahil mukhang may chilling effect yung mga ganitong pagamit ng batas eh. Uh, at nakita natin kahit nung pandemya na pag mayroon at pupos uh, na hindi nagugustuhan ng mga nasa pwesto, ay nakakasuhan minsan, exciting to sedition pa ang pinapayag na pinapasura naman ang tatay sa board. Kaya nakakatakot yung chilling effect. So ito ah, yung chilling effect mga kameta, yun yung concern talaga dito. So aside from the Uh, the, the distressed and, and troubles caused dito sa isang private citizen, isang simpleng guro. Uh, interesting this has to do with something, you know, Secretary of Education. Okay, anyway, uh, so, ang sinasabi niya, Attorney Jokne, is that is warning of a chilling effect dito sa fine of these kind of cases when laws are used against critics of the government, citing similar cases filed during the pandemic against those who express their criticisms online. Diba yun ang minention natin mga kameta noong 2021-2022? Ang dami mga ordinary mga mamamayan ay nag-complain lang doon sa government handling or kapalpakan doon sa handling ng pandemic na alam naman natin daming kapalpakan di ba? I mean, my goodness, di ba? And then the next thing you know na sinisiber libel sila, mga kung ano nung ganyan-ganyan. When, you know, anyone who bothers to check all of these all of the comparative studies, all of the studies, rankings parating kulelat ang Pilipinas through the thick of the pandemic, no, 2021, 2020, etc. And then, bandang dulo na, medyo naging okay na ba ng aid. You, you get what I'm saying? So, this is the problem. So, ito uh, ulit, ha. so, ito yung, ang complainant po ay PMS Verdo Pantoliano na nag-claim po siya na hindi siya nag-intentionally pronounce ng word ng VP. <laughs> okay, alright. Ito, ito, post natin dito mga kameta. So, ito po yung mga kameta. So, ito, ito. Ah, yung pala yung counter affidavit. One second, labas ko lang tong original complaint para naman makita nyo on your own, mga kameta. <sighs> talagang Pilipinas. Talagang minamahal natin bayan. Diba? Talagang ibang klase ng demokrasya natin. Ang hirap maging mabait na mga mayan, mati na mga mayan. So, ito po ha. So, dun sa, yung complainant po ay yung si Verdo Pantoliano na sinabi niya na hindi niya intentionally na pronounce the word VP. So, anong gusto niya i-pronounce? If not VP, then what? VIP? VIP? VP? VIP? Maybe? I don't know. When answering yung, yung ito si, si, si teacher, na uh, you know uh, anong anong drama dito bakit sinasara yung commonwealth or something like that no at uh, etong complainant sinasabi niya yung kanyang 13 year old daughter ay experience overwhelming trauma psychological and emotional stress dahil dito sa video na yan so mm, okay so ito po 
So, ang sinasabi dito, yung complaint po ay violation of Article 154 of the Revised Penal Code or unlawful use of means of publication on lawful utterances and violation of RA 7610, Special Protection of Children Against Children Abuse Exploitation and Discrimination Act, all in relation to violation of RA 10175, ito importante mga kameta, Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012, against here in person uh, yung nag-upload ng viral video na oh yeah tatawid si VIP Sara the confidential queen bigyan ja, bigyan daw daan yan yan si Sir Janus M Monar so please check it out ito po yung uh, nakita niyo diyan yung copy ng complaint so so I'm, I'm of course aside from the personal distress that is also causing the uh, Sir teacher Janus um, because these are very grave charges, the other concern also here is uh, you're creating a lot of chilling effect. Very, very troubling chilling effect. So, ito po yung concern dito uh, ng, uh, ni, ni Attorney Jock, no, among other civil, uh, civil uh, rights and human rights activists. Now, of course, let's see how the court will handle this issue. If ma dismiss itong case na to, if this is going to prosper in any way. Now, obviously, in one way or another, this is, we mentioned the dilemma case, we're mentioning this case. Now, uh, we have to also mention another important uh, case that, which is still pending and this could go all the way to the highest court of the land. Uh, at ito po yung case ni former Congressman uh, Professor Walden Bellio. Uh, so, most recently, ito po yung development niya, yung korte po sa Davao yata to, no? Called for mediation, no? Uh, dito sa case na yan, dun sa case ni former Congressman Bellio at saka uh, yung isang top aide, no? Uh, ni Vice President ngayon, no? Uh, so, ito po, the... So, the trial is supposed to proceed unless, you know, uh, Congressman Bellio and Jeffrey Tupas reach an out-of-court settlement. Now, I'm not in position to share details about this. Maybe we, we can, later on we can interview the people involved here so that they can tell us. So, so, just to give you a latest update, the original court in Davao has ordered Vice President Sarah that there is media and public relations chief and 2022 Vice Presidential Candidate Walden Belly to go to a mediator and explore the possibility of out-of-court settlement in connection to a cyber libel case. Si Bellio has been charged with maligning former Davao City Information Officer when he made yung isang reference to uh, criticism of Duterte during the election period according to the November 16, 2020 court order. Uh, to, uh, yung, yung complainant is currently Duterte's Media and Public Relations Division head. On Facebook, Bellio alleged, alleged that uh, this person was... Uh, Ah, so ito. So ang konteksto yung isang pinost niya ng 2021. Uh, so what the camp of Walden Bell is saying that the the uh, the allegedly libelous uh, statements against yung sa kabila, this was just a reflection what was already out there in the news. That this was not a claim out of thin air, but this was already openly... Uh, being uh, mentioned on sa mainstream media. You can check the article in yourself for, for all of the details. Um, now, the other camp is saying that was directly libelous. Kaya ngayon, some are wondering, just to just to make sure, no, na, hin, uh, you know, hindi potentially ma, ma weaponize ang mga ganitong uh, situations, I is that why not just decriminalize libel but make it a civil case? No, so if if, if in case uh, we have this, for instance, in other places like the United States, so kung baga, kung may, may, there's someone who spread really maliciously, intentionally malicious thing against you, then you know you can go for a civil suit and and go for for damages. No, in that case, but once you criminalize libel and now with the new cyber libel laws among others, hmm, suddenly people are wondering. Madali na i-weaponize yan. Because ayaw mo yung sinabi ni ganito, immediately accuse mo ng cyber libel, then because the charge is very big, then the next thing you know, my goodness, everything is going to change for the worse. So, this is a very serious issue, mga kamenda. This is a very serious issue. And unfortunately, lahat ng mga tao na involved sa public sphere discussion, alam mo naman, lahat tayo in one way or another, we have had to deal with the shallow, uh, shadow of potential weaponization of 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 libel suits now of course the Duterte camp maintains that you know th there has to be uh you know a proper reassessment of etong cyber law uh natin uh and making sure na hindi siya weaponized of course the other camp is naman saying libelous yung sinabi so let's see how the courts are gonna uh proceed with this or whether this is gonna move to a higher court let's see what's gonna happen on this 
as you know uh, right now Supreme Court of the Philippines is also about to check a number of other petitions petitions that have to do uh, with the another legacy of the Duterte administration which is yung uh, Freedom of Information uh, uh, Act executive order which in some way paradoxical or perhaps not so paradoxically enabled no etong pro proliferation ng confidential funds so that's another legal issue that we can discuss later on so we're uh, I'm, I'm hoping to do a, a couple of collaborations. So one of the other collaborations we're looking at is also to do a, a kind of a joint podcast with a legal expert, top legal expert. Para naman may pagka law and order, tulfo style din tayo, but you know, like uh, really law and order discussion. Of course, the other thing we're also looking at, mga kamenda, right now is uh, collaboration with also some other like-minded or some other progressive uh, YouTubers, influencers, and journalists. And in that context, of course, I also mentioned that tong potential collaboration with uh, yung kaibigan natin si Christian Esquera, something like an RRC or CRR or whatever. And this CR doesn't sound good, does it? RRC na lang. So, Ronaldo, Ricardo, and Cristiano, right? Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yung pala, no? Cristiano, tsaka Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, okay. So, let's see if we can also do those kind of collaborations because yun nga, yeah. And dami po nangyayari sa ating bansa and it's always good to have multiple people no to share their views and we 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 also look at ways to make sure na medyo 300 180 degrees no hindi 360 180 degrees talaga titingnan natin itong issue isang issue na to we look at all of the dimensions of that and then of course as, as I said mga kameta we're also looking at setting up some other joint uh, podcasts including with uh, you know one of the leading uh, legal minds in the country para naman pag-usapan din natin yung legal aspects. So there's so many things that I want to discuss. For instance, yung mga petitions sa Supreme Court, confidential funds and their constitutionality, cyber libel. So maraming pwedeng pag-usapan mga kameta. So don't worry about it. Sineset up lahat na natin lahat yan. So thank you so much sa lahat ng mga sumusuporta at nagmamahal sa atin. Your support is what's encouraging us. Your support is what's allowing us to keep on going despite all of the harassment, all of the insults, all of the stressful things. So please lang, tuloy-tuloy sana yung supporta niya para lang magagawa natin yan. And, and don't worry, I'm looking at all sorts of different collaboration kasi mag-isa lang naman ako. There's just, you know, as, as magaling as I may think I am, there's just so much I can contribute on my own my, on my own alone. No? So kung sana we can work with other people who have different expertise, constitutional law expertise, journalist expertise, political advice expertise, so Ronald, Christian Esquera, uh, uh, yeah, meron tayong kaibigan na isang attorney na we're also looking at doing collaborations so yun alright Cristiano Ronaldo Ricardo alright yun po yung tinitignan natin alright CR2 hindi pa rin magandang tignan eh buti pa yung CR7 Cristiano Ronaldo number 7 ito CR squared yung mga ganon CR squared alright pag-usapan natin yan alright so uh, looking please please continue to support us and don't worry I'm constantly looking Hindi, ganito kasi sa, sa kultura natin sa Pilipinas, talaga individualistic ang tao eh, di ba? So, it's so hard to organize people and bring them together. So, you, you have no idea how much effort I put into bring different people together. And naging lucky tayo, diyan mga katulad ni Ronald, katulad ni Leloy, katulad ni Mark, and hopefully, God willing soon, katulad din ni Chris, Christian, para pag-usapan natin ito. Mga bagay-bagay, and of course, we're also arranging with, with legal minds and experts, etc. Para may mga legal analysis din tayo. Very detailed legal analysis din tayo. Para naman mga kameta, ma-appreciate yun talaga ya, yung mga meta natin. We become really the ultimate source of public intellectual discussion and public information for that matter. No, Para naman ma-empower tayo as citizens. Because we are not going to be empowered as citizens if we do not know the basics of our law, the basics of our polit political system, the basics of our foreign policy, the basics of West Philippine Sea issues, among others. So, marami salamat. Thank you very much, guys. And please also, ito na, I think this week na nag-start yung show natin ulit, second season ng The View from Manila on One News TV 5. So, yung mga may cable or mga YouTube, please abangan nyo yan. This week, ang interview po natin is Ambassador Eduardo De Vega uh, discussing yung conflict sa Israel and Gaza and impact dun sa mga Pilipino or mga Filipino citizens, of course, in the area. And also this week, we'll have Undersecretary and Spokesman for the National Security Council, uh, Jonathan Malaya. So this week pa lang, hopefully, we'll have two different shows on View from Manila, and we also taped some other ones. More interesting people, uh, uh, not no one more, it's just as interesting people, as in more of interesting people are also, uh, we're gonna interview in the coming days and weeks, God willing. So please, continue to support us, mga kameta. Thank you very much. God bless. And talk to you soon. Maram salamat po. God bless.